In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a 3D terrain following mission to capture LiDAR data using the DJI M300 drone, the Rock R2A LiDAR, and UGCS ground control software. Let's fly! Now, if this is your first time joining me on the Indiana Drones, this channel is all about LiDAR, drones, and how to make money. Now, I have a website, theindianadrones.com, and if you guys want to learn more, the little chat bubble there at the bottom right-hand corner of that website, you can go ahead and ask a question. If it's not going to be answered in the comments below, you can feel free to go over there and ask any question. Now, full disclosure, Rockrobotic, that one, that's my company. DJI, not my company, much bigger. UGCS, I'm not being sponsored by them, not being paid by them. Right now, UGCS, this is the best software there is for doing train following with the DJI M300 drone. There are other softwares, uh, the DJI Pilot app for one, as well as a software called Map Pilot Pro. And in my opinion, these softwares just do not do everything I needed to do in order to safely fly a mission. Uh, DJI Pilot app, it works great, but doesn't work great with third-party sensors. So with other sensors that uh, DJI makes, sure, it works good. The actual terrain following is okay. Uh, Map Pilot Pro doesn't have an FPV camera, and I think that's pretty kind of dangerous. I, I need the FPV camera to see what I'm doing. So if you guys know of a better solution, write it down in the comments below, and I would love to test it out and fly that one as well. Well, let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about the setup that we're using to do this train following. We have UGCS on my laptop, so this is the client software. I have a hotspot, in this case I'm using my cell phone, and I have the DJI M300 smart controller with the UGCS software on here. And the way this works is these two devices are gonna connect with each other through a hotspot, a common net network. So my laptop connects in the hotspot, this connects in the hotspot, and now they can talk to each other. We're going to do the mission planning and all of the setup of the mission on the laptop here before we got in the field. And then once we're in the field, we're going to go ahead and turn that mission plan, upload it to the controller, and start flying that on the drone. You'll be able to monitor and control through the laptop as well as through the controller. And together, we're going to be executing a pretty sweet mission plan. So that is the setup of how we're flying. Now let's get into actually planning and setting up a mission plan for an area of interest that we're going to fly. So I'm gonna pop over here into Google Earth. And the first thing I'm gonna do is draw an area of interest and make a KML. And then we're gonna use this KML as the boundaries of our flight line area. So you can see here, I actually already have this black line right here. I made a KML for this area a second ago, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. You click this button right there, boom. And now you can come over here, click, 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 click click, and now you've made a KML, and you can see the lines are black. There's some style stuff, you can change it there. You can give it a name, test, test, and we can also come here to measurement and see that's about 48 acres right there. We're gonna have to right click, save place as, export it as a KML. See that, updated test flight, boom, click save, done. Now a few other things I'm gonna do when I'm in Google Earth before I ever go out and fly, is I'm gonna start getting a good idea of the lay of the land and anything that I need to be aware of before I ever touch a single foot on this ground. So if I zoom in right here, I can pretty clearly see there's some pretty steep terrain. I don't wanna be walking down there. That looks pretty treacherous. But right here is a really nice road that looks like I have a beautiful vantage point to kind of see this whole valley that I'm gonna fly. So that is really ideal. So I'm gonna go ahead and try driving and parking right there and flying this whole area. Looks like a solid line of sight. Now we just made a KML inside Google Earth. Let's go ahead and open up UGCS software and start setting up some of the parameters for the M300 drone. I'm gonna show you some of the parameters that I use and I like, uh, and I'll kind of give you some reasoning why I did that. But at any time, you can just pause the video, look at those numbers, and you can just copy them into your UGCS software as well. This is the UGCS client software, and here we are, uh, open in that area. The first thing I wanna do is click this menu button up top, go to that main menu, and we can see these options here. We're gonna come down to Profiles, and I'm gonna come down and click on the DJI Matrice M300 RTK. So we have it right there. I'm gonna edit this profile. As you can see, I've already been in here. I called it the RTK-R2A, and there are a ton of settings. So let's just kind of go over these settings, but again, you can pause the video right now and look at these numbers and just copy and paste them in yours. 
there's some good reasons. I don't think you should ever really have a problem with the numbers I'm using. So most of the battery numbers, didn't touch them, leave them the same. GPS, leave it the same. Telemetry, I'm leaving it the same. Routing, max waypoints, I'm leaving that the same. Uh, I'm gonna change that max altitude AMSL to 7,000. I just wanna be it, I just wanna get it way above me. I don't ever want it to be a problem. You know, I'm gonna use my judgment when I'm out there flying. If I'm flying above 7,000 meters, well, I think I should know that. <laughs> so I'm gonna, you know, just kick way up in the air. I will take the max altitude AGL, leave that at 120. That's good, that's 400 feet here in the US. That's what our, our regulations state. Um, the fence radius, this is uh, 5,000 meters. This is about three miles. And I think that's about as far as you're gonna wanna fly the M300 drone. And so I'll put that radius there. Fence altitude at 200 meters. This is just like, you know, an upper limit. You know, I'm just throwing some limits there. Uh, max travel time, 3,300, that's the default. Leave that like that. Safe height over train is five meters. I think that's the default, I left it there. 20, same thing. Now here's where I get to some numbers that I've changed. I've changed the max climb rate and max descent rate to six meters per second. Uh, just because if you don't, it's just gonna go really slow whenever it's, I mean, it's, it's totally fine going fast up these hills, crush them out. Uh, but the defaults, I changed that to four and three. So that way defaults four and three for ascent and descent, but the max, it can go a little bit faster. Uh, and the default horizontal speed. So for most of my uh, lighter missions, I'm doing six meters per second. So I threw it right there at six. So that's all you gotta do. And then once you set those numbers up, you can go ahead and click save. And you got yourself a profile for the DJI M300 drone, the way I like it. Now, make sure you, you look at your settings yourself and make your own judgment calls. This is just the way I like it. Uh, now let's come down here to payloads. We're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So once you click create new, you're gonna go ahead and get a new camera that pops up. I'm gonna name it R2A. And these are the numbers that you gotta put in in order to make it such that when you say 20% overlap, it's going to fly 20% overlap. You know, 50% overlap, it's gonna do 50% overlap. Once you get these numbers locked in here, you'll never have to worry about it. You just do the percentages in the future. So that is a one kilogram weight, 18 millimeter focal length, 23.5 sensor width, 15.6 sensor height, 6,000, 4,000, and one second photo interval trigger. Boom, get those in there, click save. Whew, that's the hard part. Now we got the DJI M300 drone set up and we got the sensor set up and we can go ahead and start planning a mission. So now that we're here in the main map view of UGCS, I'm gonna click the add new route. I'm gonna import file because we made that KML. This is where that comes in. Here's an updated test flight KML, click that. And then the one thing I wanna do is make it a LiDAR area and click next. Select the profile, the DJI M300 R2A. Click next. Some things have been sh changed. Yes, sounds great. And boom, now we have the perimeter of our flight and it's gonna generate a train following mission for us. So it just generated this, but we want to go ahead and make sure all of the settings are good so we have nice smooth corners and all of that. So over here on the left hand side, we have a flight height of 50 meters. That's what we want. We're gonna do a 33% side overlap today. Uh, flight speed, we're gonna bring it down to five meters per second. Honestly, this area is pretty small. I'm gonna knock it out in one battery. And usually what I'll do is like, if I'm gonna do something in one battery flight, I'm gonna fly a little bit lower and a little bit slower. Might as well get a little bit better data. Typically I'm flying 60 meters and six, but today I got a little extra battery I'm working with because it's such a small area. I'm gonna fly a little lower, a little slower, get a little more overlap. Just makes it that much better. Uh, and then the other things that we can do, uh, you can always change the direction angle here. So I'll show you that really quick. So if I come in here and click and grab this direction, you can see it's just gonna redraw the flight lines to be in that direction. I actually kind of liked how it was. It's gonna go away from me and come back to me. So kind of every flight line will always kind of come back to me and go away and come back to me. I like that, but I like it when it's always coming back to me between each out you know, instead of going side by side and getting further away. So, you know, it's gonna progressively get further and never come back to you. But this way, every like minute, it's gonna come back to me. I think that's a good way to plan it. Uh, now down here on the loop turn angle, I'm doing 70, uh, I believe that's meters. Uh, is it, or is that degrees? I don't know what that is, but I did 70. Uh, and then zero, corner radius, this is an important one, 55. It's gonna give you a nice rounded radius for corners. 
uh, zero, zero, and two, the next ones, and then the AGL tolerance of two. So as long as it looks like that for you, I feel confident it's gonna be a solid mission plan for you. One last thing we wanna do for our sanity check before we say this mission is completely planned is we're gonna click on these gear icons up here and click on this show elevation. Now this is gonna give us a profile view of the height of the ground versus the trajectory of our flight plan. And we can see that, yep, it all looks pretty awesome. So now I planned the mission. Uh, now when I go out to the field, I'm gonna connect in the drone to the controller to the laptop. And the only other things I'll have to do is once that home point updates from the drone, so there's a home point that it sets internally to itself because the drone is redundant. It just, it has it all stored in there. In case something screws up, it will go back to its home point. But once we have that set up, I'm gonna put that home point in UGSS, UGCS software and I'm also gonna put in a landing spot. So that way it just knows where it starts and where it ends. So at this point in the office, I can kind of set up the whole mission plan. Then when I get in the field, I'm gonna set up that takeoff landing spot. Once I do that, I'm good to go, good to fly the mission. There's just one other piece of housekeeping and that is jumping onto the DJI Pilot app to change just two settings, just to make sure nothing gets in your way when you're out in the field. So I'm gonna open up the Pilot app here on the controller, pop on over to manual flight when it shows up. All right. Everything looks good, just my backyard right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on this triple dots. And here you see I have the uh, aircraft settings, the flight controller settings. Two things I wanna change. I'm gonna change that max altitude, I'm gonna max it out. So 1640. Again, I just don't want the controller to get in the way of me making a solid mission plan. I don't want it blocking me. And then I'm gonna turn that distance limit off. That's it. If you just get rid of those two things, and then it's all on you to make the proper mission on UGCS and DJI's app and software won't get in your way, which is super annoying when you're in the field. Like, <laughs> it's the last thing you want. You know, you made a good mission. You're solid, you're looking good. Something's not working. It's probably those two settings. All right, I think that's about it. Let's go ahead and get out there in the field and uh, do the next steps to the field. All right, she's all assembled. Ready to fly. Now I'm here in the field. I have started the UGCS software. I've connected my laptop into a hotspot, which is on my phone. And then I connected the M300 controller into that same hotspot. So the order was laptop, turn on UGCS client software, which is hosting this mission plan right now. Uh, it's connected to the hotspot. And then I turned on the controller and turned on the UGCS software. So I went laptop connected, controller turned on, connected. And the third thing I just did was turn on the drone in that order. So now I have the laptop communicating to the controller and controller communicating to the drone. It all looks good. You can see here in the top right corner, I have the drone connected and you can see the battery levels, how many GPS signal, the telemetry, the RC link, and all the pertinent information to let you know that you are connected. And here on the left-hand side, obviously we have all the same parameters that we discussed already. Uh, and then we're gonna leave those parameters the same. But the most important thing is we see the drone showed up here on the plan. So let's go ahead and add a takeoff point. I'm put that right there where the drone's at. Boom, awesome. And since that is not the number two of two points, I'm gonna come here into this little parameters menu. I'm gonna go ahead and invert the segments. So now it's gonna make that take off the first point, the mission, the entire second points. And I'm gonna add a landing by switching to two of two, coming down here in the bottom to a landing point, And I'm putting that right there as well. Boom. Let's go on and work on to the next thing, which is gonna be getting the drone ready to fly do a little pre-flight over there. Then I'll go ahead and upload the mission plan to the controller and the drone. And then I'm gonna start flying. It's pretty much that simple. So let's get doing that now. All right, well, there we go. So got the LiDAR turned on over there. I'm gonna go ahead now, I'm still in manual mode. I'm gonna upload this mission. Click upload, start from the beginning. Sounds good to me. Uploading route, 99%. And boom, route is uploaded. I'm gonna go ahead and 
turn this into auto mode and let it start flying. All right, there we go, we're up in the air, we're flying. So one cool thing here is we have the ability to do these figure eights and calibrate the LiDAR right here in UGCS. So I just go ahead and trigger that right now. Awesome, there we go, everything's looking good. We're up in the air. It is going right over there towards the sunset. So it's doing just beautifully. So right now I'm monitoring the drone, both seeing it in my visual line of sight right here in front of me, but also I'm seeing it here on the UGCS app here on the smart controller. But I also have the laptop right here also showing me the flight. Now this is really nice because I both have line of sight of the drone, but I also have the FPV view right here on the smart controller. And I got the waypoints, but also the 3D waypoints there on my laptop. So it's pretty nice. I, I like it. It gives me a good sense of comfort that, hey, I can see the train following's working. I can see it here on the controller. I can see the altitude, the speed, the distance uh, away from me. And everything looks great. Oh yeah, and the battery level. The battery level, that's the most important thing, really. <laughs> if anything, I would like to have the battery levels a little bit more pronounced on this RC version, on the controller, because, you know, that's, that's really important. <laughs> you never wanna be looking around for where the battery percent's at. It's nice, it's not bad. Not bad, just maybe a little bit bigger. That's okay, though. Well, there you go. That was another Indiana Drones video all about terrain following using UGCS software, the DJI M300 drone, the ROC R2A LiDAR. If you guys have any questions, leave them there in the comments below or go to theindianadrones.com and leave them right there on that chat bubble and someone will be right there talking to you. You can get anything answered. Uh, I really hope you liked the video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you here next time on Indiana Drones.